Alright, today in this 2007 Honda Pilot, we're going to install a brake controller using part number ETBC7. And the brake controller we're going to use at our end of our stall will be part number 90885, the Takancha Prodigy P2 brake controller. To start off our install, we need to get our four pole free from its mount. So we'll go ahead and remove it from the bracket and get it pushed out of the way for now. And then we'll install a new bracket for our ETBC7 kit. Alright, now the bracket we're going to use to attach our 7 pole to the hitch will be 18136. So we'll go ahead and attach that to the hitch. Now we'll go ahead and take a bracket from the ETBC7 kit and we'll attach it to our first bracket using the hardware provided in the kit. Now when we install our bracket for our 7 pole connector, we're going to flip it around and install it backwards. This way, the 7 pole connector will recess a little bit farther back and match the edge of the hitch that's already installed. Then we'll take our 7 pole connector and attach it to our bracket using the hardware provided in the kit. Then we'll use some electrical tape and some new material to help clean it up. Our two wires we're going to tape up will be a white and a purple wire. Our white wire will run to ground in the frame eventually and our purple wire will be used for a future upgrade, either reverse lights or a secondary circuit of some sort. We'll go ahead and plug the two four pole ends together. We'll also apply some dielectric grease to help protect the contacts and make it a semi-permanent connection. The part number for the grease is 11755. And our white wire will go directly to ground. After our four poles are connected, we'll go ahead and work with the two leads that are black and blue. We're going to take the gray cable that comes with our ETBC7 and connect it to these wires. Now the cable has a black and a white wire inside. We'll run it black to black and white to blue. So we'll go ahead and make our connections, then tape them up to help seal them. Then we'll go ahead and start running a gray cable up towards the front of the vehicle. We're going to run it over the rear suspension just to help hold everything up for a while. Now also to help hold the wires, we'll be using some limb clamps, part number A0500. Then we'll go ahead and start running our gray cable up towards the front of the vehicle, up by the firewall, and towards our battery. Okay, now when we run our wire up towards the front, we want to stay away from anything moving, like suspension components, or anything hot like the exhaust. Now in this case, after we went by the rear suspension, over the top, we ran along the brake cable going all the way towards the front. This is the parking brake cable. To make pulling the wire up easier from the engine compartment, it's a good idea to use a piece of stiff wire, or in this case, we use a piece of old airline tubing, to run it down first, tape it to our gray cable, and then pull it up. Once we pull it through the top, we'll go ahead and take out all our slack. We'll stop working with the wire for now, and find a location for our circuit breakers. Now we need to use two. One will be a 40 amp circuit breaker for our hot lead, which will be our black wire. This will eventually provide a 12 volt power supply to the 7 pole connector. And then we're going to use a 20 amp circuit breaker for eventual use with the brake controller. With our circuit breakers installed, we'll go ahead and start working with our wire again. We're going to route our wire up and towards our circuit breakers, and then we're going to route it underneath the intake, then to the positive side of the battery. Make a mark on our wire so we know where to make an opening in the wire to connect our black wire eventually to our positive side of our battery. So we'll break open the cable and get up to the black wire. It has some ring terminals and connected to our 40 amp circuit breaker. Now our connection to the battery will be one of the last things we do. So we'll leave that off for now. And then use the rest of the cable to pull the white wire into the inside. Okay, now with these connections made, we'll go ahead and route our wire to the inside of the vehicle. We're going to use a grommet with a cable going through it already that is above the gas pedal, off to the right hand side. We'll go ahead and make a slit in it, and then we'll go ahead and run our cable from the outside to the inside. We'll go ahead and use our piece of airline tubing to help pull it through. Okay, we'll pull up what we need and take up the rest of the slack. Once we have enough material to work with so we can attach it to our brake controller wiring harness, we'll cut it off short. Now with the wire we have now, we only need the white wire. So we'll go ahead and strip back the sheath and get back to our white wire and cut our black wire short because this, the other half of this black wire doesn't go anywhere anymore. 
So we know this will be our output from our bread controller. Okay, now with the rest of our cable, we'll go ahead and run it back through the grommet and then up to our circuit breakers. So at this point, we'll end up with two wires underneath the dash. We'll have a gray cable with a black and white together and our single white wire. Now we'll go back up to our circuit breaker. The black wire will connect up to our 20 amp circuit breaker. And our white wire will go directly to ground. Now on this install, we ran a little short on wiring, so we'll need to use an extra length of 10 gauge wire. Then we'll continue on from our circuit breaker to the positive side of our battery. If all the wires ran inside the vehicle, we'll go ahead and get our brake control wire harness ready to go. First off, we'll bundle the wires together using the remaining loom material that we have. And then we'll go ahead and add our buck connectors. We'll go ahead and add our buck connectors to the wires now. We'll put them on the white, black, and blue wires. Then we'll trim off our red wire. That will end up using a different type of connector. All right, we'll go underneath the dash and, make, and hook up our wires. Using the two black and white wires, we'll connect up color for color. So black to black, white to white. And our single white wire, we'll connect up to our blue wire. Now our red wire needs to go to our brake light switch. Now we need to use the wire that's only hot when the brake pedal is touched. So we'll go ahead and test the switch. In this case, we're able to use a probe and check in the back of the switch to get to the contacts. In this case, we found out that our brake signal is going to be a white wire with a black stripe and silver bands. So to make our connection, we'll use a quick splice connector that comes with an ETBC7 kit. We'll put the connector on our brake wire first, then we'll slide our red wire inside. Then we'll go ahead and close it together using a pair of pliers. Okay, once we're done, it's a good idea to check our connection at the other end. Now we'll go to the brake controller. We'll go ahead and use the pocket that comes with the brake controller and we'll attach it to the bottom of the dash. We'll use one of the screws to go ahead and attach it to the dash first. Then we'll use our brake controller to help align it. Okay, once we're satisfied with the placement, we'll go ahead and take the brake controller out and put the second screw in for our pocket. All right, now we'll go ahead and take our wire harness and run it from behind the pocket, not the top, and then plug it into our brake controller. Then we'll snap the brake controller back into the pocket. Okay, at this point, we'll go ahead and take some time to zip tie our wires, make sure they're safe and secure and out of the way. First, we'll go ahead and make our final connection to the battery. We'll take our two ring terminals and connect it to the positive side of the battery. Okay, let's go check our brake controller. We've got two dots, so that'll show us that there's power on and one of the boost functions is turned on. Okay, we'll hit the manual override and it should say NC for no connection. All right, now we'll go ahead and plug in a trailer. When we plug it in, we'll get a C4 connection. Then we'll try to manual override one more time and you can see how it scrolls through the numbers. And we can also adjust the gain at the same time. So that's working just fine. We'll go ahead and press the brake pedal and then we'll get some numbers to show up there as well. So that tells us we got signal from our brake pedal. So it looks like everything's working. And with that, that'll finish it for our install of the ETBC7 kit and our brake controller the Prodigy P2 from Tecancha, part number 90885, on our 2007 Honda Pilot.